to the broadcast today and what a joy it is to have you sharing this broadcast with us. It is wonderful, beautiful outside and I hope it's beautiful inside for you because uh, it's a great day. Uh, I want to welcome you again to Mount Zion and how wonderful it is to have you sharing with me on this glorious Sunday morning. Uh, 40, uh, 42 years of ministry, but 34 of them right here at the Mount Zion AME Zion Church in Montgomery, Alabama. And I'm very grateful to the Almighty God. I know it's by His grace that I am here after 34 years. Make no mistake about it. I know that it is solely because of God's grace. And so I give Him thanks for allowing me to be a part of this ministry and this broadcast for this number of years. Now, let me dedicate today's broadcast in memory of Mr. Lewis Hendricks, uh, who is in that uh, Jackson Hendricks family in Wetumpka, Alabama, my home folks uh, that I love, and uh, Mr. Hendricks going on to be with the Lord, uh, my late uncle's great friend and my father's friend. Uh, his funeral is Saturday at one o'clock. I'll be eulogizing him, but uh, our broadcast again today goes out in memory of the late Mr. Lewis Hendricks. And so, good morning to uh, Mama uh, Dot there in Wetumpka, Alabama, uh, Jackson, and to that Jackson family. Our condolences to you uh, and know that God will see you through. It's a great day for us to talk about a ball of confusion is actually the lesson, but it centers around two dynamics, one about praising God and the other, uh, you'll see what the confusion is as David talks about it in Psalms 9 uh, in the lesson today. So that uh, Psalms 9 verses 1 through 12. Remember I said to you a few days ago, when you're talking about the Psalms, you're only talking about songs. So there are different songs in scripture. Some of them in the book of Psalms are happy songs. Uh, they're rejoicing, they're celebrating, uh, they're recounting uh, the blessings of God and how God has brought them out, brought them through, brought them over. And so uh, they have a great reason to rejoice. And there are many of you uh, who can do that because God has brought you out, brought you through, and brought you over. I can do that because God has brought me through, brought me out, and brought me over. And so I celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. But then there are other uh, times when we were at low points uh, in our lives, uh, perhaps even in our ministries, and where, uh, you know, there was what uh, the lesson is entitled, somewhat of a ball of confusion it appeared, uh, in our lives. And so uh, with that, we're proceeding, understanding that the book of Psalms uh, represents a lot of different kinds of songs. You know, in, in the life naturally now, uh, we grew up singing the blues and we grew up singing um, uh, what R&B and rock and roll and, and, and all that kind of, and pop uh, and hip hop and all that kind of thing. And you know, that's music, uh, so that there are different genres or styles of music and, and you know, different stages and eras and all that kind of thing. Uh, and so it's the same in the book of Psalms. You've got all these different types of songs uh, that highlight how David was uh, experiencing life, if you will. And so stay right where you are because we're going to get into one uh, in Psalms 9. Uh, Father, thank you for the word of God today and for the children of God who are gathered everywhere. Uh, we pray for your revelation, your insight into the word of God. Uh, give us humility of head and heart so that we will not just be hearers of the word, but doers of your word in Jesus' name. I thank you for all those who mourn, especially I lift up to you the Loves, the Browns, the Jackson, and Hendricks today and ask you give us comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get right to it. Uh, Psalms 9, verse 1. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart 
In other words, I'm not sparing anything. Here's a big, big dynamic when we talk about uh, how we worship and when we talk about uh, celebrating the Lord. Are we half-heartedly doing it? Are we doing it uh, with reservations? Are we doing it uh, without understanding God wants all of us? Hold heart in this case uh, in the Hebrews speaks to us celebrating God with not just the innermost being, but with our minds. And sometimes, you know, we're in worship, but our mind is somewhere else. And so God wants us to celebrate him with our whole being. Uh, I don't like it when people are uh, moving around and doing a lot of different things while we uh, worship. Now, I can tolerate uh, if we're videoing the service, I, we have to do that for obvious reasons, and we snap a few pictures sometimes as well. But I, as a rule of thumb, I really don't like it when we have situations where uh, people are moving and people are passing notes and people are, are texting and emailing and all that kind of thing. Doing worship, worship is about you offering God all of you, and you're just too small, you're too dependent on an almighty God for you to be doing all of these other things while you are supposed to be worshiping a holy and a righteous God. And so uh, I hope that we're going to get that right in worship before we go to heaven, that when we're worshiping, we'll do like David says in this text, I will worship the Lord with my what? With my whole heart. I will give him my whole heart. I will not spare God. My mind, my heart, my emotions, uh, my, my gestures, I will give God all of me uh, when I am worshiping him. And look, notice the second, the second declaration. He says, I will tell of your wonderful deeds. You know, uh, as I said at the outset, I'm celebrating 34 years. I can tell of the wonderful deeds of the Lord, whether I'm doing it uh, on the broadcast uh, about my own life, about church life, about my family's life, about some of your lives. I can tell of the wonderful deeds of the Lord. I've got more stories about other people than I have about myself because I've watched God for 34 years right here at Mount Zion. I've watched him save people's lives. I've watched him raise people up back from the dead. I've, I've watched him turn things around, watch people come out of horrific accidents, which you would, thought, would have thought would have been fatal. I've watched God. And so David says, I will tell of your wonderful deeds. Not just that he died and he rose again. I didn't see that. I believe all of that completely by faith. But what about everything that I've seen? What about everything that I have experienced? What about everything that I, I know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side and on my side and on their side, we would have been wiped away. But God, uh, the Lord just reminded me, uh, the Reverend Lee Chester Washington is probably listening to the broadcast uh, right now, and he just reminded me of one of Reverend Lee Chester Washington's cousins who was in uh, one of those bad tornadoes in Alabama some time ago. I think it was the one in Pratt City, just outside of uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, he said something told, this is the cousin, something told him to go get in the bathtub. And we thought that was a little strange, but that man's life was spared, and that house was demolished. Nothing left, but he was left, and the bathtub was left. How about that? You can tell of the wonderful deeds of the Lord. Or how about it, Mrs. Perline Holston, uh, whose SUV, the big Yukon, she was driving, big white Yukon. Somebody smashed into it. She doesn't know how many times that vehicle turned over uh, right here in Montgomery, Alabama. And I rushed to the hospital, and I could hear her screaming as I was coming down the ER hallway. And I heard her scream, 
uh, my pastor, once she saw my face excruciating pain and on to UAB and emergency surgeries, but she's walking, she's alive, she's back almost to normal uh, because I watched God work a mighty miracle. Her life could have been snuffed out of her, but God said, no, I'm going to put angels around her. I'm going to protect her life so that she can not only see the goodness of the Lord, she can tell of the wonderful deeds of the Lord. I just visited yesterday uh, after a funeral. I visited a church member in the hospital there uh, who blacked out uh, on his way home, a couple of blocks from his home, blacked out. Uh, blood pressure had gone a little too high, and that happens whether we're taking our meds or not sometimes. And uh, But listen, uh, he didn't hurt anybody. He didn't hurt himself. The ambulance bags didn't deploy. And, and, you know, he's doing fine. But you, you got to tell of the wonderful deeds of the Lord. I'm clapping right now because God deserves some extraordinary praise from the children of God because he continues to do marvelous things, wonderful things to us. Two or three folks here at Mount Zion who've had cancer in three or four different organs, major organs, and God snuffed that cancer out, stopped that cancer from taking their lives, extracted that cancer, and they're still in their right minds, and they're still going, and they're still serving the Lord, and they're still doing ministry, and they're still paying their tithes and all, and they're still looking up toward heaven and declaring, my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Wow. Look at verse number two. Uh, David says, I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Listen, I watched uh, most of the football game last night uh, with Alabama uh, and Texas A&M. And when I drove up a few minutes ago in the parking lot, one of my faithful uh, members, uh, friends, and, 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 and faithful uh, Alabamian said, oh, don't get out with tears today uh, because he knows I'm a big Alabama fan. He's a big Auburn fan, and we were laughing about it. But you see, one thing I never get confused with, yeah, I didn't cry over the game. I'm sad we lost the game, but I find my exultation in the Lord. I find my greater joy in the Lord because guess what? He never loses. He never messes up. He always plays offense and defense, and he always wins. It's a mighty good thing to be on the Lord's side because you can understand when you're on the Lord's side, you are always winning. You're never losing. How does it feel to be a winner? Last week I talked about from victims, uh, from victims to victor, I think in the uh, Friday session. And, you know, it's a good thing to understand you have victory in the Lord Jesus in the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean that you are without problems. It doesn't mean you're without challenges. It doesn't mean you're without difficulties. It doesn't mean you're without sometimes sicknesses, diseases, death, divorce, devastation, all the disappointment. It doesn't mean that. But in the midst of that, you have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can be glad and you can exult in the Lord. Now, uh, verse 3 gets into a different dynamic in today's lesson. Let's look and see what David says in verse number 3. When my enemies, I like this, turn back, they stumble and perish before you. David says, my enemies came after me, but they stumble and they fell because the Lord took care of that. Listen. Uh, sometimes people spend too much time on their enemies. I've said this to people over and over again because they make so much uh, to do, so much to do about their enemies. Listen, your enemies can't do any more than the Lord allows your enemies to do. And I sometimes I really believe this with all my heart. If God allows your enemies to do something, maybe they're going to push you more to pray. Maybe they're going to push you more to do what you need to be doing for the Lord. But your enemies can't do but so much 
because God is over your enemies. God is in charge. And God doesn't want to wipe out your enemy. God wants to save your enemy. And sometimes God wants to develop us. Because we sometimes we're just talking. Uh, we're not allowing God to really develop us. We're just talking uh, the game. But God develops us more through our en enemies and the negativity thereof. And so uh, sometimes I just try to remember, uh, and, and it's easier now for me to remember. Might have been a little harder 20 years ago, you know, as I said before, now I don't get as easily upset or I don't respond the same way because I know God is handling things. <laughs> uh, you got to have faith that God is handling things for you. God is handling things for you. You say, well, I don't know why it's taking so long. I don't know why it's taking so long either, but I know God is handling things and God can handle things much better than you can and much better than I can. So David says, when my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before you. Listen, uh, I like another passage. David says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou see the reward of the wicked. Listen, God can handle your enemies. You quit trying to handle the thing because you're going to mess it up. Let the Lord handle it because you're going to mess things up. You don't know how to handle anybody. Most of the time, we can't handle ourselves. But God can handle our enemies and cause them to fail. Now, verse 4 says, For you have manifested my just cause. You have sat on the throne, given righteous judgment. Now, a big, big dynamic here. If your cause is just, then God is on your side. I, I, I'm always replaying uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I, I told you that's my favorite preacher of all time. I, I'm always replaying the speeches, and I've got to uh, go online now, and I'll probably do that this week and, and, and uh, repurchase or download and repurchase whatever I've got to do. Uh, those great speeches of Dr. King. And I hear him saying uh, this verse right here, verse 4, our cause is just or our cause is right. And when the cause is just, when the cause is right, then God is on your side. Ooh, that's a good thing. When you know God is on your side, uh, Paul, Apostle Paul says it like this, since God is for us, who can be against us? Or in the King James, if God be for us, who can be against us? But I like the, the more modern version. Since God is for us, who can be against us? Whew. Look at verse number five. I got to rush. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. God can handle the wicked. Verse six, the enemies have van vanished in everlasting ruins. Their cities you have rooted out. The very memory of them has perished. So God says, uh, David says, the Lord takes care of the enemies. Come on, settle that in your mind. God takes care of the enemies. Hallelujah. Verse 7, but the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for judgment. You know, that's why I like God. God's not going anywhere. God's sitting on his throne right now, not changing. Listen, I've, I've replayed some uh, scenarios. Um, uh, let, let me do it this way. And, and they, weren't, they weren't bad in this sense. The first one was a little bad. Um, one bishop said to me what he, he could do more for me than such and such uh, persons. And that bishop didn't make it out of that year that he said he could do that for me. So what if I had been put in my trust in that bishop? See, then I would have just been left because that bishop went home to be with the Lord in probably three months after he told me that. Another bishop said, uh, uh, another bishop said that his colleague asked him to look out for me. Mm-hmm. That bishop has gone on to be with the Lord too in the last five years. 
And so another fellow said to me, hey, let's go with this bishop. That bishop has gone on to be with the Lord. Now, here's the reason I'm telling you this. The Lord is sitting on the throne forever. So I always cast my lot with the Lord because he's not going anywhere. He, the Lord is not going to leave me uh, at all. He doesn't have to die. Jesus has already died, and he's not dying anymore. So I have cast my lot with the Lord Jesus Christ, the bishop of my soul. If he doesn't look out for me, I'm not going to be looked out for. But I dare not put my trust in a man what that I know is dying. I dare not put my trust, my life, my ministry in the hands of a person when I know people are dying. And the Lord is sitting on his throne forever. And he has judgment. Look at verse number nine. He judges the world with righteousness. He judges the people with equity. Now, you know, there are a lot of things going wrong in the world right now. And I don't know how God and when God is going to handle it. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm bothered by what's going on in the world. I'm bothered. I'm bothered with people being exploited. I'm bothered with the partiality that I've seen through governmental and judicial actions. I'm bothered by that. And one race gets this and another race gets left out. I'm bothered. But I, I, my, my consolation is that the Lord is going to judge the world with righteousness and with equity. So God is not going to be partial. I just have to wait until the Lord decides I'm ready now to judge. All right? Look at verse 9. I've got to speed on. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And so for those of you who feel like you're oppressed, you run to the Lord. God is a stronghold. A stronghold is where uh, you went for safety. It's the safe place. Uh, it's the protective place. It's a place where uh, there are fortified garrisons and soldiers and, and you know, and, and artillery, if you will, where you have the best chance of survival. You know what I'm saying now? God is your best opportunity to, to survive, to be protected. He's the stronghold. Hallelujah. He is the stronghold, no matter what the trouble is. It could be natural disasters. It could be political corruption. It could be, uh, 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 what do they call it, organized crime. It can be unorganized crime. It can be a disease. It can be whatever it is. But God is the stronghold. Uh, what's that song? I think Whitney, late Whitney Houston sang, Where should I go when there is no one to talk to? I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the, to, to the one, the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I go to the mountain and the mountains stand by me. When earth all around is sinking sand on Christ, the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock because he's the stronghold. I like Prudential's commercial, get a piece of the rock. Mm-hmm. They said they're not going anywhere. Get a piece of the rock. But the stronghold, the real rock, is Jesus. Let me see what I get done in six minutes. Look at the next verse. Verse 10. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. God wants us to run to him. Now here's the interesting dynamic. God wants you to come to him. Now there are times I must admit I'm unavailable because I'm human. I'm frail. I'm fragile sometimes. I try not to be fickle, but I am human. And so I can't handle everything. I got that. Somebody said to me, oh, you, you think you're Iron Man? Nope, don't think I'm Iron Man. That's why when I'm exhausted, I put my phone on silent. Or I turn it off. Or as I'm planning to do in a short time, 
get a break and not work for some days. You know God didn't have to take off any time. Put your trust in the Lord. God doesn't have to take off any time. He wants you to seek him out. He's not tired. You say, well, I, I bothered God all the time. I, I get tired of bothering the Lord. You can't bother God. He's too big for you. Hallelujah. You can't wear God down. You can't weary the Lord. You can't make him tired. He doesn't rest. The Bible says he doesn't slumber. He doesn't slumber nor sleep. He doesn't slumber or sleep. God is, a, is awake, alive, strong, powerful all of the time. It's inconceivable that everybody can call on one God and God has time for them and God hears all of their prayers and God answers and God delivers and God sustains and God provides and God protects and God shelters. Come on. And God comforts, and God makes you strong, and God builds up, and God restores, and God heals. Listen, nobody is like God except God. Only one and true God. There's a passage, I think, as Apostle Paul said, to the one and only true potentate. Woo! There's only one superior, only one supreme being. God handles it by God's self. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. David now finishes the psalm about like he starts it after he talks about that ball of confusion stuff, these enemies coming after him, all these different things that he got to deal with. Look at what David now says. He says, sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Zion where the city of God, people of God. Mm -hmm. uh, we added Zion to the AME name because we were founded in New York City, 1796. And the AMEs were founded in Philadelphia close to the same time. And so we added, they were AMEs, African Methodist Episcopal. We were AMEs, African Methodist Episcopal. So we added Zion to distinguish. And Zion means it's the city of God, the place of God, the people of God. Hallelujah. Uh, so when God talks about Zion in scripture, he was talking about that Israel nation. And the Bible teaches us the Christians are the spiritual Israel. You are the engrafted branches into Israel. Hallelujah. Now, uh, children by adoption, if you will, if you don't understand the engrafted branch. So David says, sing to him. It's a command. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells where? In the midst of his people. Declare his deeds among the people. So I'm supposed to declare the deeds of the Lord among you. I'm supposed to shout about his goodness. I'm supposed to act like I'm going crazy. I'm supposed to be in a frenzy for the almighty God. I like it. Hallelujah. God, keep me strong. I like it. I've got a minute and 37 seconds. Look, look. for he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Listen, you say, well, I've been down a long time and the Lord hasn't come to my rescue. Maybe he hadn't gotten you out of what you're in. Maybe he hadn't moved or, or stopped the hand of the enemy. Maybe he hadn't moved the sickness, the disease, or the trouble that you're faced. But listen to this. He has sustained you. He has stood by you. He's giving you strength. He's giving you grace. He's giving you mercy. He's still talking to you. He's still listening to you. He's still on your side. And so, don't forget He's mindful of you. I think I'm going to end the broadcast on that today. Don't you forget that the Lord is mindful of you. And who are you? Just a little human being. Maybe you got a position, but who are you? Just a little human being in the sight of God. Maybe you're the big man, the big woman in the sight of somebody else. But who are you really? Just a human being created in the image of God, after the likeness of God, and you're trying to make it. Who are you? Just a human being created in the image of God, after the likeness of God. And God is on your side. That's our lesson today.
We're praising God. We're called out to praise God. You are God's child. You're called out to praise him. Don't let anything stop you. I know you've got some challenges. I do too. I have some challenges too. I know you've got some issues. I have some issues. Don't you allow anything to stop you from praising the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, it's almost time. My time is almost up. I want to thank you for joining me. This is Mount Zion, AME Zion Church, Montgomery, Alabama. And we would love to have you in our 10 o'clock worship service. Reverend Myron Smoke of Jerusalem Baptist Church is my guest preacher this morning at 10 for pastor's anniversary. Hope you'll stay with me. Have a good day. Have a great week in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.